Okay, we are live. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back again with Billy from anxietyunited.com, co, uk, whatever. <laughs> How's it going, Bill? I'm <laughs> oh, good. It's, all I'm good. it's, it's all good, good to be here again. Yep, yep. So we are up to, um, I guess it's the third one in our little Anxiety 101 series. And uh, we're going to be referencing an article that I wrote many years ago. Uh, we'll put a link in the video description, regardless of where you're watching, so you can follow oh, along nice. if you want. And this week we are up to what is a tiny little paragraph in my article, but it's probably a pretty key thing. And that is the mm -hmm. idea that fear actually feeds this beast. All right, so it's, uh, we're going to talk all about fear. Last, last week we talked about danger as it relates to fear, and today we're mm -hmm. just going to really get into fear and the fear cycle. This is it. Yeah. Important yeah. section. It is an important section. It's, it's a pretty important concept. I feel like we say that all the time, like every concept is important, but this, this is pretty key, I think. So, what are your thoughts on fear? Uh, well, for me, fear. I've been doing a lot of thinking since we did the last episode okay. and thinking about the danger and the fear. And I mentioned something in the last video where I was thinking, what comes first for me? Is it a sensation? Is it a thought? And then what, you know, where does my state of anxiety stem from? But then I thought about, like, the sensation. I would imagine that everybody gets the sensations that I experience like they'll get a flutter in their heart or a, I don't know struggle for breath maybe at some point but the problem stems is from the response that I have in my mind when I get that sensation because if I'm immersed in something if I'm playing a video game or watching a, a film on tv and I get something nine times out of ten it'll just go straight over the top of my head but I think when I'm in that mindset where I'm monitoring my sensations that's when the problem starts so it becomes fear yes. then the cycle starts then nine times out of ten again there'll be something else because of the response that i've had so maybe there's a, re a release of adrenaline more sensations more perceived danger the cycle yes i would tend to agree with that so we were we were kind of talking about that before we went live um it's not so much the sensation, and when we say that fear feeds the beast, it's your reaction to what you exactly. feel, right? And I think what you said is really, really important, that like everybody feels those things. So everybody feels hot or cold. Everybody has a pain in their shoulder. Everybody, you know, sometimes I used to think, even in general, like, I look around me and think, well, people all around me are, you know, sleep deprived and feeling like crap and maybe a little under the weather. Yep. And how come they're not freaking out? Like, they might mm -hmm, feel mm -hmm. crappy too or, or whatever, but yet I'm losing my mind over every little twinge. And uh, so when we say fear feeds the beast, it's not, this is where you start to make that cognitive switch or, or shift from not worrying so much about how fast your heart is going or if you're sweating or if your legs feel like jelly, but how you react to those things and, and yes. the self-talk and, and what starts to happen. And um, we should probably talk a little bit about since fear, we're saying fear feeds the beast, we should probably talk about that cycle of fear or where like Claire Weeks talks yes. about second fear. I was and, thinking because for, for many people, that initial whatever it is that causes the anxiety in the first place, it's right. so different for many people. I think for me, one of the main triggers would be stress. Mm -hmm. And I don't know stress about what, just stress in general, but it can also be like nervous fatigue. It could just be, I don't know, Claire Weeks mentions a lot of things like after operations and stuff like that or stress as i say or guilt or sorrow sure all those things that can begin that initial cycle well i think we all have our triggers right everybody has different mm. triggers but um mm. regardless of what it is for you and stress is stress for me now stress sleep deprivation yeah you know, i'm more susceptible yeah. right mm. but regardless of what what the trigger is it's once you've you experienced that trigger and you have that that reaction to it Yes. How does the fear cycle actually start? There's always that first, and I, I think it starts with that first initial, oh, like, oh my God, or, yep. oh crap, yep. or here it is, or, mm -hmm. uh oh. And then from there, we know how we can just start the cycle then starts to build. Well, that's it. You have that, whether it's a sensation that starts you off, or it's the first thing that you notice, maybe. Mm -hmm. But then it is, it is just purely a cycle once you're in that cycle and you've either had the thought or the sensation and then you react to it and then obviously that creates more anxiety which then creates more sensations yes which then creates more 
and you just get stuck in that until you can learn to accept what we were talking about last week and that's that you are in no danger these sensations are harmless and i think that's the the part that so many people get wrapped up in they have this and then they question well how can i be okay if i'm experiencing this sensation or this sensation yeah but if you have been diagnosed with anxiety and that's what's causing it then you are in no danger we're back there Yes, and I think that's pretty. That's a pretty important point. If you've been diagnosed with anxiety, and I think some people they don't, you know, maybe they haven't sought that diagnosis, they haven't gotten it. Mm. But I, I always feel like even if you haven't been officially diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, after this happens fifty or sixty times to you, at what point? At what point does the yeah. rational part of your brain to begin to hold sway in some way that says, mm -hmm. well, this is obviously not heart attack number 65, so... Yeah, but, yeah. Um, that's a very good point. Yeah, and you're right. So regardless of what the trigger is, and it's that initial that initial flash. So I can, I can relate. Um, a couple of days ago, I was out. And it's funny, I had to put gas in my car. Petrol. Mm -hmm. So I had to put gas in my car. And um, I was pumping the gas. And suddenly I realized, like, I'm feeling a little depersonalized. Mm -hmm. I, I suddenly noticed that I was feeling that way. Yeah. And what the best way that I can, I think, relate that is if I would go back, like, to when you and I first met, that instantly takes hold, right? Yes. And it's like, okay, yes. now I start to focus on how I feel. Well the, mm -hmm. gas, well, the gas pump doesn't seem real. I can't, I'm not sure that I'm really feeling the, mm -hmm. the gas pump in my hand. And that looks weird. And I don't feel like myself. And, and I begin to think about and really yep. turn my focus inward on mm -hmm. every sensation and every thought and start to have an inner dialogue with myself. Mm -hmm. So I think the fear cycle really starts when you react to that sensation. For me at that moment, it was that slightly derealized yep. feeling. Yeah. Um, and to me, I know success comes for me when I notice it. And at this point I can say, okay, I noticed it. Now let's just move on to something else. Yeah, so yeah. I still have that thought, that initial thought still comes. I just don't answer it. So I, I don't know. I, I think so talking about the fear cycle, the fear cycle really is fueled by, to me, having that inner dialogue with yourself. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Right. You, you, have, know, you have those negative thoughts. And then when you start to answer them, that's what yeah, gets exactly. carried away. I think, and a lot of people will try and maybe they'll have the sensation and they'll just try and dismiss it. Whereas I think what you've just said is, is the perfect solution is don't dis don't don't just try and dismiss the fact that it's happening right it's Acknow happening acknowledge it yeah, yeah yeah acknowledge it and just say to yourself this is happening right now but i'm in no real danger this right. isn't anything more than a normal sensation or whatever or even if it's a flashing thought mm -hmm. it's that next stage just don't get caught up in the cycle yeah because once that once that thought pops into my head i can still i still have the thought and I'm just trying to really break it down, like what actually happens in that situation. So, you know, it's mm. scary. It's, it's a little bit frightening. Mm -hmm. So it's like that, oh, this is scary. Okay, I could acknowledge it as this is an unpleasant feeling. This is what's happening right now. But it's, it's, there's no more judgment attached to it as saying, well, like, hey, the sky is blue or it's raining. It's just, it yeah, just yeah. is. Yeah. There's no good. There's yeah. no bad. There's no anything. It just mm -hmm. is. And that's where you start. That's where you break the fear cycle. So the initial flash yeah. of fear might be there. But if you don't. I just keep talking about inner dialogue. If you stop, don't answer yourself. Like just, yeah, that's it. Don't add the what ifs. What right. if this happens now? What if right. that happens next? Or I think it's okay even to have that thought, you know, because mm. it's hard to stop them. Like, well, I, mm. can, I can still let that thought come into my head. I'm just not going to answer it. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to start to discuss it with myself. I'm just mm. going to let the thought come in and go. Because mm -hmm. um, I think what goes on in our heads is really what fuels the cycle. It just makes it worse 100%. and worse. Yeah. Mm. Um, maybe we should talk a little bit about, I'm not going to say it's irrational because in the end there, there's always a, a, a little bit of rationality in the fear. Mm. Do, do you, have you ever been in that situation where your reaction, you start to have that inner dialogue, you follow down the, the fear train or go down that road in your head and you convince yourself like this must be the one in a million time that something is really wrong. Is that, a, is that, has that ever been a thing for you? I don't really know, to be honest. I think maybe the panic attacks that I've had, that's probably the only times that it has when it's developed into a full-blown panic. Right. But what I, what I notice with myself is like, I'll, if I speak to my wife or, or anybody like that, I'll always say I've had a bad day. Yeah. But for me, I think the anxiety that I have with a 
fear response or anything. It only ever lasts for, I don't know, hour tops, I would say. Okay. It's never a, I never touch wood, have a bad day. Yeah. Where the whole day is whole just day. fueled with anxiety and it's fear after fear and sensation after sensation. Right. If I if I break it down, I think that's why a lot of people tend to keep a journal so you can sort of, you know, break the day down into hours if you have to and yeah. recognize and realize that you don't have constant anxiety. It's not fear after fear. There are stages in the day where you can have a brief respite even if it's only one good hour. Yeah. And then try and focus on that, maybe. But yeah. I don't know. For no, me, I've ne- it's it's never been that. You I never, mean, it's been that intense, but it's never been that constant sort of thing. Sure. And I think that makes sense, like, when, you know, if it actually does get into a full-blown panic attack, because maybe you just went too far down that that road mm. with the thoughts. That makes sense. I mean, for but me, then, I know that then you, used to be for me. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've had that panic attack, that kind of quashes the fear then at the end of it, it you does, get right? that you get that brief moment of yeah right because that, you're just you're all you're all out of everything you know? right right you're out of chemical that's it like it's run its course and yeah 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 there's that magic moment of when you finally realize mm-hmm. like oh that was stupid you know it was just a, a panic attack and i'm fine that that mm-hmm. magic moment of i'm fine I guess, which is, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I think if we recognize the fact that what we're talking about here is a fear cycle and that fear is really what's feeding this or fueling this. It's not, it's not the sensation of your body. It's not the annoying person in the cubicle next to you, or it's, it's not the fact that you're in a supermarket or in a shopping mall or, That's or it. the you know, situation is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's how you react to that situation mm-hmm. and the fear you create in your own head. And when you learn to you know, acknowledge that, understand that, and stop the cycle from ever getting started in the, to begin with, then mm-hmm. that magic, like, ah, like, comes fast. Suddenly yeah. it, it happens instantly. Or, and after a while, you don't even notice that it happens because you don't even get to that afraid part or that disturbing part. You don't, That's it. You don't need to feel better because you always feel okay. So... so is, this, is this acceptance? It all acceptance ties, of... It all ties together. The response? Yeah, yeah. A little bit, accepting that... Yes. And a part of it, I think, to tie it into acceptance is it's what's happening is happening. When I feel derealized, I just am. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. as opposed to saying, like, I need to find a way to make this go away or I need to find a way to get to safety. I need to find a way to stop my heavy breathing. Yeah, I need to do something right. that's going to stop this from happening. Exactly. Yeah. I don't need to do anything. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think, like, when you, you mentioned talking to your wife, and you may just describe to her well you had a bad day but I think a lot of people when we use those things like as a, a safe person or safety behavior and we'll talk about those things down the road but to illustrate the fact that it's the fear in your head that really fuels this when you have that distraction mm-hmm. like if you know if your wife walked in and you started a conversation with her maybe you mentioned yeah. I'm not feeling so good right now but if you get mm-hmm. into a conversation with her suddenly you, you suddenly don't feel so bad I bet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 100% yeah, and, and, and that's the distraction. It's just it's not because your your mom or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend, husband, dog saved mm-hmm. us. It's, mm-hmm. it's because they got you out of that whatever you did, snapping the rubber band or coloring book or whatever, got you out of that yeah. fear cycle. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know, it stops you from manufacturing fear in your own head. Which I suppose these being things that we would then consider safety behaviors. Yeah, I and mean, we can talk about that down the road. We're going to talk about coping. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, which are not necessarily stuff. helpful. Yeah, right. They're not. I mean, they they, they are helpful in, in so much as they can illustrate what's going on and, and point mm-hmm. out things. But uh, well, I think that might be next week. I'm not sure, but um, they're not necessarily helpful other than helping you mm-hmm. recognize, like, oh wait, as soon as I get out of my own head, things started to be better, um, which mm-hmm. is often mm-hmm. the case. And I think it's worth mentioning, even for people. We may be talking about full-blown panic attacks, but even people who will say to me, well, I'm just anxious all the time. Every day, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. just from the time I open my eyes, time I go to bed, it's torturous anxiety all the time. I've, I've said that myself before many a time. Right. And, and, and really, again, what's fueling that? You know, because I think just when you're in the moment, you just, you're so negative and wrapped up and caught up in it that right. you just believe that it is that constant, when in reality, it's, it's not. Which is dangerous for us to say because I think a lot of people will be have their feathers ruffled. It's like we're not saying it's all in your head, like it's it is it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all in your head, like it was all in my head. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, exactly. 
you yeah. can watch videos that I've put on where I say, in fact, there is a video where I question, am I the only person that suffers with this constantly 24-7? Sure. Well, the answer is, I don't. I don't suffer with it 24-7. Yeah. Constant. That's huge. That is huge. Yeah. That's a huge realization. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so if you're in that situation where you feel like you're just a constant anxious mess all the time, if you start to understand that some of that is being manufactured here, mm. some of it, you know, I mean, yes, yeah, so you might have pain all day long. It's possible. It's possible mm -hmm. your leg hurts all day long. But pa yeah, pain is not anxiety. Right. Pain, neither is a racing heart. Neither, mm -hmm. is, neither mm -hmm. is being in the supermarket or having to mm -hmm. go to a wedding. That's not anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's what's going on in here that actually generates the anxiety. So, again, the bottom line here, fear feeds the beast. And we have to learn to recognize that. And then when we learn to recognize that, then we can learn techniques for stopping that. Yes, we'll get to that. I was just going to make one point about the fear cycle, and that is sometimes, like with the the start of the anxiety and then the sensations, the after effects of the cycle, right. sort of when you do come out of it, because I felt exhausted after it, yes. and that can then sometimes kick off it again, because you'll start worrying about, I've got no energy, I'm tired all the time, Sure. and that's something that I've got caught up in quite a few times, and then I'll, then I'll spike again and why am I feeling like this? And then I'll start feeling the other sensations and I'm back in the loop. So I think recognizing that sometimes after you've been in the cycle, if you can glimpse out of it, then just expect that you will feel, you know, a bit fatigued after it. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And, and when mm. the chemicals are kind of, you know, the adrenaline is doing what it's doing and then it, it dissipates and it's worth noting you, you can't have, and I know people will argue, people are going to get mad at this, but nobody has a 24 hour long panic attack. The human body is just simply yep. not capable of producing adrenaline on a constant level for 24 hours mm -hmm. straight. It mm -hmm. doesn't happen. So you're going to have those ups and downs. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes what happens is we get exhausted afterwards, like you said. And for yeah, some yeah. people, that exhausted feeling is a trigger. And for yeah. some people, any change in state is a trigger. So when you go from mm -hmm. here to here, it's a trigger. And then when you go from here way down here, it's another trigger. So those waves. And again, it's though, just accept that those changes in state are going to happen. And don't let it get here. Don't start, you know. Are we doing an it. episode on triggers? Well, probably. Somewhere in there we'll do an episode. So there'll be like a four-hour so episode. So many. Oh, there are so many. <laughs> yeah. We ask people to like list your triggers. The list gets yeah, that's long a good idea. and fast. Super yeah, long, yeah. you know. But uh, so, yeah, so that's what we're talking about here. It's just getting, I think, recognizing it first and foremost. And then we start to talk about how you can, mm. how you can just sort of kind of get past the fear. Not, not like fight it, not beat it back. Yeah, we're, we're slowly getting further into, we've had the no real danger. Yeah. Now we're looking at recognizing what the fear is yes. or recognizing fear. Yep. And then we'll move into. And, and not the sensations. And I think that goes into something that I've like kind of beat the drum about for a long time, which is not trying to address symptoms and we'll yes. talk about some of that too like yeah, symptom, yeah. the symptoms aren't anxiety a racing heart is an anxiety you know like you said the pain in your leg is not anxiety so symptoms yeah. seems to be the the one key topic that i'll say that we obsess about people want yes. to know every inch of why they feel the way they do and i don't that's not healthy i do it myself sure but sure i used to do it and i think it's pretty common think, when yeah you know, like, oh, well, I hate when I feel like this. So what can I do to make that go yeah. away? What can I do to slow my yeah, heart yeah. down? What can I do to make, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and then you're just playing whack-a-mole with your symptoms because the symptoms. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The symptoms aren't what feed it. We just said it's the fear mm -hmm. that feeds it. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, do we have anything else? We've been at it for about 18 minutes. No, but we've still got a long way to go. We do have a long way to go. Let's see. Next <laughs> episode. Let me look. We're going to talk about, okay, we're going to talk about to coping techniques, which is coping techniques. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty big learning, breathing mm. and that sort of stuff next week. So, so that's going to be helpful co coping techniques. Yeah. And, and I think we're going to find that coping techniques and avoidance and safety behaviors kind of dovetail mm. a little bit, but we'll talk about yeah, yeah. learning the difference yeah. between them and, and what the positive ones are, and what maybe the not so positive ones are. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be back again. Yeah. This is good. So uh, we'll close like we always do, Billy at anxietyunited.com or on just YouTube, youtube.com yeah, YouTube, slash anxietyunited. I made 5,000 subs, so thank you. It's uh, finally. Nope. How, many? How many? How many? 5K. 5,000. All right. Not too shabby. Well, if you're watching on my channel, go subscribe to Billy's for sure.
Uh, <laughs> <Nice. laughs> but, uh, yeah, but uh, if you have questions, yes. uh, you actually answered some comments, you know, so you lied. You said, don't ask me anything. You, I, I, I saw, know. Yeah, I saw yeah. you engaging people. So. Yes, I did. <laughs> but, uh, I had yeah. some time on my hands, I thought. Sure, sure. Let's do this. Any, uh, of course, questions and comments are always welcome, whether it's on Billy's channel or my channel. or yep. at tw I'm on Twitter, at that anxiety guy, but no one tweets at me. No one cares about Twitter, I think. Or, um, just... They've changed the layout. A little bit. Facebook.com slash that anxiety guy or just that anxiety guy.com. Just send whatever comments and questions you have my way and we'll, yes. we'll incorporate them. At some point, maybe we'll take a break from the article and actually do like a QA. That might be good. Yeah, I was going to say if anybody has any, because if we're doing coping, coping skills next week sure if you've got any specific coping skills or things that help you yeah throw them out there whack them in the comments yeah put we'll, them in the video comments yeah. or tweet at mm. me or facebook or whatever and we'll maybe we'll talk about that we'll incorporate them mm. so mm. all right man good job as always That's it. yeah happy days we'll see you guys next time yes good luck Ta -da.